Okay, I'd like to ask uh, all of the parties uh, what is their policy on supporting a parent who wishes to stay at home and bring up her children rather than them being in a, you know, a nursery or, or day school or whatever? Well, uh, I believe in uh, parents should have the freedom. The parents should have the freedom and for, for choice of how they want to bring up, bring up their, their children. That's, uh, that's, that's that, you're not answering my question. What policy do you have what policy? to support? I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I, to be honest, you I, don't know. No, I don't know. As Thank I, you. I, 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 I okay, I'll get someone this. else. Can you cover? I think what you have uh, on is, is probably the area that most of the parties don't really have attention to because what their attention is on is encouraging people to go out to work and early years education, as in formal education, not um, helping people stay at home and look after their children. So I think. You're probably, you probably hit on to something which I don't think any of the parties are really paying a huge amount of attention to, but I think it be should. One of the things is the flexibility in terms of paternity and maternity, uh, pay when people are having children. Mm -hmm. um, that's certainly one way of, of trying to be a bit more flexible in terms of how long you can take your paternity or maternity pay and how you can share that between the parents. And that certainly eases the burden, but I appreciate what you're saying is a longer scale, as in for the whole of the primary school. I mean, a bit like others on the panel. My mother was at home all the way through my primary years, and it was only when I went to secondary school that I, um, I, you know, that she wasn't. So I think you're right. I think there's a pressure on society to have parents going out to work. I'm not sure that's always good for children. Um, and there's also a, a, an appreciation that part-time work and flexibility in work helps children too. Yeah. And taking taking people out of the tax, um, so increasing the tax threshold that we did when we were in coalition and that we still support is a way of helping that as well for both parents. So if the tax threshold is higher for both parents, that means that you're earning more before you're paying tax, which means more money in the house. So that helps, but it doesn't really address the more fundamental point that you're making, which I do think has to be something that we've kind of we're focused on the other end of the. Mm -hmm. The debate, I suppose, that in terms of you know, we're very keen to see um, investment in early years education and and giving children from the age of nine months a place in a nursery school. So I think that you're absolutely right. Um, but I do think there's also something to be said for children having a formal learning experience relatively young. But one of the things I don't support is the fact that we push children into reading and writing and, and a formal, very formalised education at the age that we do. And if you look at Nordic countries, the children are play out there, they have um, you know, a, a, an education which is focused much more on play in the early years. And I think that's something that we can learn from and we can have that. But I, I think the point that you're making is a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Richard, uh, thank you. Uh, we have a term we use to describe the childcare policy of the mainstream parties. We call it ABN, anyone but mum. They don't mind who's looking after kids, kids as long as it's not mum. So it can be dad, the SNP have just introduced some paternity leave that can only be for dads. Or they want the kids in nursery. But for the SNP, for the Lib Dems, etc., they're feminist principles. They think that equality for women means that women need to be out earning and pursuing careers in exactly the same way that men are. And as Conservatives, spokespeople say that they want both parents working because then they pay more tax. So we think families should have the choice. A lot of women say they would actually, a lot of mothers of young children say they would actually like to work less and to have more time with their kids if they were able to do that. We, we don't want to tell people what to do, we want to give them the option to make their own decisions. So a transfer, fully transferable tax allowance is the obvious first step, that's just fair. And that would give families more choice, but we've got one extra thing. The SNP has just doubled the amount of nursery time available for three and four year olds. It used to be you just got a morning or an afternoon, they're changing it to you get a morning and an afternoon. Okay, and that's costing that they've budgeted a billion pounds for paying for this in the next year. Now, what about a family who thinks, well, I actually don't want that, I actually don't want my three year old in nursery all day. You know, morning's quite enough. That family's got to pay the tax to pay for the, for the parents who do want it, which we think is completely unfair. They're trying to push parents into, say, both parents working. So our policy is,
But if a family says, well, actually, we don't want a three-year-old in nursery all day, morning's fine for us, then they can take a cash alternative for the nursery time that they're not using. And the thing that really winds me up in this, if you listen to them talking in the Scottish Parliament and at Westminster, Scottish Parliament in particular, they talk about children being in nursery as being the best start in life. So they're doubling the nursery time in order that all children can have the best start in life. Implication, being at home with mum or dad is not the best start in life. Being in state childcare is. And to put it mildly, uh, we beg to differ. Thank you.